thinking you're going to be traveling a lot so you need hiking shoes or you're going to be running, you're going to be on a path for a long time so you want to get some good running shoes. But I'm not going to listen to your description of what you want, I'm just going to bring you some shoes. And if you, if you put them on and they fit, wear it. Yeah? That's what happened with me when I heard this information. It was like an unspoken yes, and it stopped me in my tracks. And it never stopped reverberating ever since. Because in recovery, we have a statement that is so profound. And I've had an, an intimate experience of it, which is self can't get out of self. Yeah, It's like a warning. It's a statement of warning. And when you hear it, it's sort of like a shoe being presented to you. And if you put it on and it fits and how it fits for me, when I finally saw that, it showed me that that's what was happening most of my life. I've been attempting to get out of self as a self. Yeah. I was doing exactly what the warning is trying to steer you clear from. It's saying self can't get out of self. Yeah. Why would someone say that? Yeah, unless they were trying to warn you that you may be trying to get out of what you can't get out of. So that you can save a whole lot of freaking time and a lot of trouble. Yeah, so self can't get out of self. Then what's one to do when the drive is to get out of self? Yeah, when I used drugs or drank, I was trying to get out of self. Yeah, I wanted to escape what I thought I was in or who I thought I was. Yeah. But if you can't, if, if you try to escape self as self, that's more self, yeah? And then there's a statement in AA that says before you get to the third step, which is the main principle of turning your will and your life over to the care of a higher power or of a power greater than self, and the way I say it is greater than self, yeah? There's this, there's this modality of self and now I'm going to make a decision to turn my will my life over to the care of some other power that's greater than that self. I can't actually fulfill the mission because I'm occupied already by self. In my experience at that point, self is running the show. But I can make a decision and then I do certain steps, four through nine, and those action steps promote an action where suddenly the grip of self gets weakened and now I can actually sense that other higher power, the possibility of a power greater than self. And then your experience is like that little dog that was masquerading like the big dog. When, it, when the big dog comes in, the little dog rolls over. So when the higher power or the power that's greater than self shows up, the big dog shrinks. Yeah. Because, and the only thing I found that this modality of self respects is a power greater than it. It doesn't respect you in the condition we're in. It's using us as transportation. Yeah. So this idea of, and so it says that you have to quit playing God. So if that which, if self or selfing is playing God through your life, if it hears that, that statement, and now suddenly that which is playing God is gonna to try to quit playing God. What is that but playing God? Yeah. How can you get out of it? How can that which is playing God play itself out of playing God? It would go on ad infinitum and there's not a point where if it does it enough, it can finally stop playing God. It doesn't reach a point where it works. It didn't say self can't get out of self except after 10 years or ask, except after 35 retreats or except after you meditate 800,000 hours. No, it said self can't get out of self because the warning is you may be in that condition right now. You may be identified as something that you're not trying to get out of that as something that you're not. That's what hit me when I heard it. I mean, my spiritual pants fell down and I didn't pull them back up. And my whole life at that point, I was only, I, I was a house painter. I wasn't that good of one. And the only place I could hang my little hat of identity was as a spiritual seeker. I was a pretty good spiritual seeker. I had a nice resume. I'd been a lot of places, met a lot of teachers. 
And then suddenly, when I saw all of that spiritual activity was described perfectly by self, trying to get out of self, I've been trying, the, the whole thing just explained my whole freaking life, that one little statement, and it just froze me. It just stopped, and I finally freaking stopped trying to get out of what I can't get out of, yeah? And how did I, how, and then what happens is when the relief showed up, it told me almost like reverse engineering why the relief wasn't seemingly available before. And then I saw how this thing called self does its little maneuver, yeah? And I call it selfing because I see everything as a verb. There's no nouns whatsoever. There's just verbing, yeah? There is no self, but there's selfing, yeah? So the mental processes, the memories, the thought system, the perceptual interpretation, they're always in the act of being identified as a self. They're taking us to be a body. When you're thought about, you're thought about as a body. When you're remembered in life, you're remembered as a body. You can't picture yourself five years ago as a spirit. You, how can you go oh, five years when I was in Echo Park, you know, just fucking hovering in the ethers? There's no, you can't, that you can't think about yourself as spirit other than framed as a body, yeah? So the thought system pictures us as a body. So all day, the thought system is thinking about you, and what it's thinking about you is you're a body. If you're listening to that all day, it's going to be quite easy to assume that you're a body, and this is the dilemma, then suddenly, you as a body wants to get out of the body. Yeah? When, if there was a retreat in L.A. today of three days of chanting, I'm not a body, yeah. So there'd be, th but what would happen is, would, is it the spirit that's chanting it's not a body? The spirit's quite, quite clear it's not a body. It's <laughs> someone who thinks they're a body is trying to chant to get out of being a body. Just like you want to get out of a story, that's a freaking story. The story of Paul or Mary is the one we think is real, and then, th then there's a sense that Paul and Mary have tons of stories. And once again, we try to pin our troubles on something other than us. So we say, if we could, I could only get rid of the stories, yeah? But that's a freaking story. You can't get out of it if you believe you're in it. The freedom is before it. The freedom is inherently available. We're all awake right now. We're all seeing without any effort. Some people will go to sleep without any effort. We're feeling, tasting, touching, smelling. None of us have gone to a seeing class today. None of us have been practicing hearing, you know, like hearing, you know. Yeah. If your ears work, you're gonna hear. If the ears doesn't work, that which is hearing is still hearing. It's just it can't be facilitated because you have a bummed ear. But it's not the ear that's hearing, is it? It's not the eye that's seeing. If I died and, they, and I wouldn't be seeing a damn freaking thing, but if you could take my eye out and put it into a living body, it would facilitate seeing. That eye would see, yeah? So it's not the eye that's seeing, it's not the hand that's feeling, it's not the ear that's hearing, it's something, it's something, it's what you wanna call a consciousness or awareness, and we're all it right now. Yet, when I, when I look with these eyes, I see you as a thing, yeah? And then I just, there's just a huge excuse about all this. Like the biggest, the biggest presence in this room is space, really. Yeah. That big, no space got moved out when we came into this room. It wasn't like there's a certain amount of space and then 40 people came in, so it squeezed some space out. And then we're taking up the space. We're appearing in space, yeah? Did anything change in the space of the room when we walked in? If we took this wall down, we'd have to have like a, 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 like a, 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 a size of space that would fit exactly where that wall was super quick before you saw the void, you know? <laughs> Put the space in there. No, this is appearing in space, but it's not taking up any space. 
We're appearing in space, but we're not taking up any space. When we pass away, space isn't lighter. What is that? What's seeing right now with no effort? It was seeing on my worst day, it's seeing on my best day. What is that? This is what happens if you know it if, as an addict. You know it because the selfing leads you to a point. It's, it's I have, I idea of surrender is to lead you to fuck it, yeah? So it will just present false evidence until it finally appears real to you and then you make a decision from that seeing it real and you do fucking something. You have that drink and then suddenly, maybe you had a little bit of jealousy in your life. When you get loaded, you're up on stalking charges in a month, yeah? It amplifies all the insanity as soon as it gets its fuel. But like all parasites, it, ha it, doesn't, it can't call Uber to get what it wants. Alcoholism can't drink. It can only drink through this body. You can't, alcoholism can't shoot up. It needs to convince you to take yourself as this and then to do its bidding. How does it do it? How does it convince you to do shit that goes totally against your own interest? Because it, can, it talks to you as you. If you heard the same thoughts that drive you crazy as Stanley's, you would turn it off in like 30 seconds. But because, you, but because they sound like you, you've been listening to them for 30 years. Selfing is the act of being identified as a self, a feeling of being a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. Yeah, it's not so, but it can seem to be so. And so what happens is the thought system is used to reinforce the identification as a self. So the thought system is constantly obsessing over you to keep identifying it as you, yeah? It's almost like a glue that could never hold, so it gets applied all the time. So when you look at it, it looks like it's so, yeah, but it isn't. It can never be so, but it can seem to be so. So it appears to be true to us, yeah? So false evidence is appearing real to us. We're the reality, yeah? And so what happens is the selfing claims what it comes in contact with through conscious contact. It claims the thoughts and calls them mine, yeah? So now every thought that happens is, is held as my thought. Every feeling that happens through the day, through this event, my mental state says it's I'm the one who's feeling them, yeah? So now all the feelings are being used to imply that you're the feeler. All the thoughts are being used to imply you're the thinker. All the actions are being used to imply you're the actor. And it will even go against your first-hand experience of being powerless over alcohol and drugs, sort of like when you dance with a, with a gorilla, you're going to stop when the gorilla wants to stop, that you were powerless over alcohol and drugs. In other words, when I got loaded, I was apt to do almost anything. Yeah? But still, I still have a lot of guilt and shame for all the shit I thought I did when I was under the influence. Where's the forgiveness? Were we powerless or not? This, if, the, if the recognition of powerlessness is thorough, you get relieved of a lot of fucking guilt and shame. Because you know, deep down, you were apt to do almost anything if you put alcohol or drugs in you. But the mental state will keep harvesting guilt and shame from the past over and over again because it's a good bonding mechanism. It holds you to your story, the story, and then you're wedded to the story, and you never realize the biggest story of all is the one who has the stories. That's it. You are what you're looking for. The seeker is the sword. These statements, it's sort of like a, you know, the cigarette pack where they have a warning. They say this could be hazardous to your health. I think every spiritual book would be great to have this stamped in the beginning of it, which is, there's a presupposing a non-existent thing, yes, wanting to get salvation for the non-existent thing. There's a presupposing, so the okay. mental state supposing that this is existing, it, it, it identifies the spirit with the body, 
And it says, all right, so this non-existent thing is now existing, and I want to get salvation for the non-existent thing. I want to get a coffee for the non-existent thing. I want to get a date for the non-existent thing. I want to get this for the non-existent thing. Yeah? If this is the case, your spiritual practices themselves will be used to reinforce the non-existent thing. How can they destroy the non-existent thing? If all the doing we're doing to get out is actually a larger demonstration of being in, how the hell is it going to work? How the hell is it going to work? That my, It's like when I, um, I've had trouble with digestion for a long time. Yeah? So I was driven to try a lot of things. And I, I was driven to buy this stuff at Whole Foods. It was from Canada. Came in like these little milk bottles. They were like $48 for a six pack of these. And they had like 50 billion beneficial flora. So I was drinking a six pack of this a week. So I was putting 300 billion beneficial flora citizens into my little fucking intestinal scape for a year. It's like 46 bucks a week for a year. And I was hoping I was feeling better, but I didn't know it. So I, I got in touch with Smoky Mountain Lab in Tennessee, which would ch check my shit and tell me what was going on. Yeah. So then they sent me an application and I asked the question, they say, do you want to know about parasites? Definitely. Everyone wants to know about parasites. Parasites. <laughs> then all this. And I check all these things and I can't wait to get the information back. I get the information back. I'm reading it. It says, I, it says no parasites. I go far out. That's great. I, I look at signs of beneficial flora. 0.00%. There's no, there's not one sign of the 50 billion zillion things I put in there. It's like 0.00%. Then the next paragraph was unbeneficial bacteria. These two kinds who are feasting on the beneficial bacteria. <laughs> so I was catering to the fucking bacteria in my belly. I was going out and getting the most delicious fucking organic, raw sun cafe stuff for it for a year. All the while thinking I was really, you know, I, I have a good intention. I just want to feel better. And immediate, but it was taken completely misdirected and I was making it worse. Isn't that the case? Isn't that the case that you, if you sign up for a two-year retreat on obsession with self, isn't that obsession with self? <laughs> this is what hit me. I'm not happy about it. I could have been a circuit speaker in AA by now. I could, if, I could have be, if I could have stayed and been helpful to people, I would have had a great career. But in this state, in this, what's prior to everything, there is no help needed. It's already inherently so. There's nothing that has to be established. What has to be questioned is what you think is established. Yeah? When you see what you're not, when, this is what happened in my nine years of sobriety. I've been doing a workshop in AA, four set workshop for many, many years. And then, I always read this one part of how it works, you know, when we do the inventory process. And on page 64, and then something had happened, and I was going back to that book, and I read the same thing I'd read thousands of times, but I saw it completely differently. And this was the sentence. It says, being convinced, which is like a present tense verb. Yeah. It didn't say you were convinced, you hope to be convinced, but being convinced right now that self, manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. Yeah? So Bill W, knowing it or not, separates the two. It says self, this sort of foreign installment, and us. Yeah? And this foreign installment, self, or let's say called alcoholism, yeah, defeats us by manifesting in various ways through us. Yeah? It manifests through us. And through the manifestations, and then it goes, all right, if we're clear about this, we'll look at some of its common manifestations, meaning selves. And the next paragraph is resentment. 
says resentment is a number one offender. And then we get to the fear, and then we get to the acting out to get what we want by looking at our sexual history, yeah? If you look at the statement, it sure sounds like resentment is an expression or a manifestation of self, not us. Yeah, That fear is a manifestation from self, not us. We're the expression of it, but we're not the cause of it. We're not the source of it. They're not ours. The resentments aren't mine. They come from something other than me. Yeah? Something that has occupied what I call me and is manifesting through me and in through those manifestations by me not seeing that it's the parasite's manifestations is defeating me. Because when the parasite, let's say if Stanley was manifesting through me and, and fucking ruining my life, but everything that Stanley was doing through me, I kept calling mine, I would be in the act of being identified as Stanley. Yes? That's the disease of alcoholism. We're in the act of being ident identified as self. And as soon as that identification's in place, self now has the possibility to manifest through us and it's got the perfect, perfect camouflage because everything it does, we call it us. You never see it as a foreign installment. Every time you recognize its expressions, you call them yours. What is that but being identified as something that you're not? This is what happened. I saw it as a foreign freaking installment or a pad called a mental parasitical movement. And when I finally saw it that way, a possibility that hadn't been available became immediately available, which was I can be free from it. <clears throat> and it explained to me what I'd been doing most of my, from six years on, I had been trying to be free as it. I've been trying to be free as the parasite, for the parasite, by the parasite, instead of from it. Just like I lived for those two bacterias, I was living for this. It was using me for transportation. And every time it manifested through me, I called it mine. It's the perfect disguise. And when it enters any topic of my life, I see it, but I call it me. That's it to me. And the only way I can know the problem is from the solution. The only way you know why there wasn't any relief is through relief. When you get stabilized relief, it reveals to you why you didn't seem to have stabilized relief. And it's all, it's sort of like being in a movie theater and there's a big head blocking the movie from you and then you finally realize it's your fucking head, yeah? <laughs> and then you can sit down. If you see, if you see selfing as an activity, what possibility arrives very quickly? It can stop. Activities can stop. You can't stop unless you kill yourself. And that's what happens for a lot of us. We won't drink again, but we blow our fucking brains out because we can't see the difference between what's talking to us and us. Yeah. Find, check, see the foreign contagion. See it as not you. Isn't that what the fourth step is? You're making it, you're take, doing an inventory of how self has defeated us. How self has defeated us, not how I defeated us, but how self defeated us. Why would, we're doing it so what? We can recognize it. We can see it as something other. Because in the seeing it of something other, possibilities arise, which is I can be inherently free from it. In other words, I don't have to get out of self. I have never been in a self. There's been tons of selfing, and it assumes I was in it. It seems like, like I was in it. it. Its history is I've been in it, but I've never been in it. As Jesus says, you know, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. Yeah. You're in this idea of self, but you're not of that idea of self. You're before the idea of self. The idea of self is delivered by thought, and you're before thought. How do you identify yourself? I don't. You don't need any more identification. Because <laughs> that's what selfing is, right? 
The selfing is a form of identifying. And that's the duality, right? The well, that's how it splits. Split exactly. It exactly, it splits. But see, the dilemma is we had it the other night. If you let's just riff a little while, then have a question and answers. But we had it the other night, and my one of my friends was talking about. All right, so Pauling, Paul is Pauling, yeah. So Paul is selfing, yeah. What happens? How now? How much is Paul selfing, and how much is Paul not selfing, yeah? But then I said, no, it's not like that. There's selfing, and then there's the assumption of Paul, yeah. The selfing, that giant narration all day, you have it, yes, like Cape Paul. That selfing going on all day, yes, assumes there's a Paul. As soon as the identification occurs, now you think it's Paul that's been selfing all day. You see it? There's selfing. The selfing implies, insinuates, assumes, believes that you're a body, a person, and it's constantly assuming it all day. And when there's a belief in it, you suddenly, the selfing, produces a sense of Paul, and then immediately Paul thinks it's selfing. Yeah? You see it? It's beautiful. It's, just, it's exactly what Ramana Maharshi was saying. There's a presupposing of a non-existent thing. So here's the selfing that's supposing there's a non-existent thing that's you. And then when you buy it, it presupposes itself to be you, historically. So you feel, so as soon as you see the self thing, but immediately you think you're doing it. Yeah, it produced, see the self thing produces the sense of Paul, the Paul gets presupposed, and now you suddenly, I've been selfing all day. This happens every time. I meet people, they call me up, Oh, I've been selfing all day. And I said, no, that's not it. It's the feeling of being the one who's selfing all day is the product of the selfing. Yes? And or they go, selfing's been driving me crazy. No, that's not it. The feeling of being the one that's driven crazy is the product of the selfing. The selfing happens and then something comes after that is implied before. That's it. That is it duplicating it constantly. That is the, that's the living x-ray of it, yeah? There's Pauling, then there's a belief in the Pauling, suddenly it projects that there's a Paul, but the Paul now suddenly comes the one that was Pauling. <laughs> you see? The Pauling produces the Paul, the Paul claims to be the one that's doing it. Isn't that your day? Look at it, when people have a feeling and then they go, I didn't want to feel that. They came after the feeling. Consciousness is what we are, yeah? Consciousness, the animation is what's living. And it's never not living, it's always verbing. There's, not, there's never a point where spirit becomes spirit. <coughs> it's spiriting, yeah? It's animating, it's living. It's seeing, it's hearing, it's feeling, it's touching, it's tasting. If there was 30 other sense gates, it would be doing all of those, yes? And it never fucking stops. The mental state cannot go with that. So it says, no, I'm a fucking noun, and now I don't see life as happening, I see it's happening to me. And I'm gonna stick with the fucking story, and then suddenly you get invested in the story. It's like the old poopa scoopa thing I use in AA. There's an old, uh, I, when I used to do these four step workshops, so there's this guy who has a really nice house, but an incredible lawn. And he has, he has all these, he rents it out for weddings and lawn croquet and bowling and everything like that and picnics. And he loves to run out every morning and jump on the morning dew with no shoes and run around. Then one day he jumps off the porch and lands in some shit, yep. So immediately his life changes. He goes back on the porch, has to put on some shoes, yeah. And he starts walking around and he sees there's a lot of shit everywhere and it's starting to stink. So he goes, I gotta fucking cancel this wedding we have for Saturday. So he starts canceling the things and he goes inside. He looks out four hours later and there's more shit. Stinks like crazy. 
So he just says, fuck it, pulls the shades down, goes to Costco and buys pictures of lawns and puts them there and starts waxing poetically. Oh, I wish the lawns, all those great days and da da da. And other people he starts meeting have the same problem and they get together and they start holding meetings. And they're all bitching about, oh, I had a beautiful lawn and now there's so much shit on it and what's there to do? And then he reads, hey, there's a pooper scooper. And if you get really good at pupa scooping, you can get enough shit up that you can get maybe four by eight foot piece for a couple hours, <laughs> shitless. And then he starts getting, oh, I'm going to do it. And he starts getting good and shares at these meetings and other people listen to his advice. So he write, he does some tutorials and he starts selling pupa scoopers and he's got the little videos picking them up and everything like that. Then he has like, you know, like overalls, autograph models of hooper scoopers, comes a circuit speaker, you going around, yes, we can all pick up a lot of shit, you know, and our lives will look a little better, at least for a little while, but if the more shit, the better you get to this and that. So suddenly a guy comes in and says, hey, I heard you have a problem. The guy goes, I don't have a problem, I'm a big fucking expert on all this, and the guy goes, okay, find the dog. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, what? Find the dog. And you would think the guy would rush for that solution, but now he's, there's an investment. He thinks he has a solution. He's a fucking expert. Hmm. Shit picker up. Her. Yeah? He's got, and he's got 500 pooper scoopers in the garage. I can't fucking... <laughs> you know what I mean? His whole life's invested in this story of being Paul. Yeah? So he doesn't like the solution even though it's available, because if you get rid of the dog, there goes the shit. But it's going to be hard if you're the dog. You're not going to want to get rid of the dog if you think you're the dog. Yeah? If you're identified with the disease, you're apt to have it. Yeah? Because you're not going to entertain the possibility of living free from it because you're identified as it. Yeah? You'll never be able to get a radical relief because the radical relief is inherently available by seeing you're not that. It doesn't come from getting better. It doesn't. Yeah? Getting better allows other possibilities to arise. When the, shit, when the smoke clears, when your life gets sort of normalized, the mind can get unfettered from certain things and then possibilities arise. And it starts to realize it is what it's been looking for. Yeah, not as a body, not as a historical figure. But you'll hear a statement by St. Francis and it will reverberate. What's looking is what you're looking for. Which is a beautiful statement. It doesn't say who's looking, what's looking. So what's looking right now is what we're all looking for. He's trying to save us some time. Yeah, but it's the looking for it that's blinding us. Yeah. Because we're looking for what's looking from a foreign or a false reference. So you're trying to know the truth from the false instead of knowing the false from the truth. It's ass backwards. I'm telling you, I've seen it. And then the solution is before the problem. Yeah? When you're in the problem, you need solutions big time. But if, this, if you fall upon this solution, it tells you the problem is an activity that the solution is entertaining. Hmm. Literally. The problem is an activity that the solution is entertaining. Everything here is prefaced by seemingly so. It's all appearing to be true or false to us. We're reality, like it or not, yeah? We are reality, we are dreaming. Like the Course in Miracles, if you've ever heard of it. It's, there's a famous lesson, lesson two, where it says, you and I give everything all the meaning it has. That's a powerful situation we're in, yeah? Right now, you and I are giving everything all the meaning it has. Can you imagine what happens in AA when you do the, because someone today, all the people at bars do the first two columns of inventory. Mm -hmm. They know who they're mad at and why. And it just leads to another fucking drink, yeah? AA just says, begrudgingly pushes us to see our role in things. 
in a very small little scenario, like, oh yeah, I did take that silverware from my grandmother's house, you know, follow oh, finally is a giant breakthrough. Then you get introduced to other ideas that you're giving everything all the meaning it has. You've got a much bigger role here than you can imagine, yeah? I mean, you're giving everything all the meaning it has. You are the dreaming of the dream. What? Yeah. You and I are the dreaming of the dream, not as the dreamt. Yeah? See, this is the problem once again. You share a message, like say, hey, you and I are the dreaming of the dream. What hears the message or claims the message is the dreamt. So now suddenly the dreamt thinks it's dreaming and says, I'm going to dream Cadillacs and fucking everything's going to be great. I'm just going to dream and have tons of everything I want. That's not it. This is the dreamt. This message, we're not talking to you today. We're talking to what you are about a you. I'm not talking to you about what you are. That doesn't go anywhere. I'm talking to what we are about us, yeah? With the hopes, and not hope because I have faith in it, I know that which you are, I know it knows already, yeah? What you are knows what it's not. Trying to convince what it's not to know what it's not is pointless. There's something in us, that's where the ahas happen. The, the, when it resonates happens. It isn't you're not getting it. It's mind, what you are gets it. And what you are gets it so fast, it takes no time at all because it, it is it. It's not getting anything. It is. It's the only possibility you and I have about what we are is to be it. You can't know it, you can't experience, you can't understand it. You can only be it and you're being it right now. All the doing is what produces the effort and the sweating and the fucking vigilance. Being is very, very open and relaxed. It's not concentrating at all. The sunlight isn't concentrating, is it? It's us with a magnifying glass that concentrates it. It's dispersed, that's what mind is like. Mind is like this sky, totally wide open. It allows tons of shit to appear in it, but it isn't affected by anything that appears in it. There is not one cloud from last week still in the sky. There's all the planes that fly through the sky, never call the tower saying they ran into a big chunk of sky, ever. You could have 365 Fourth of July explosions, they would not rip the sky open. Yes? Mind is like sky. What we are is not of thing. We are not of duration. We're not of this or that. We're like the space that's everything's appearing in. Yeah? There's an old Zen statement. It's sort of a joke. He goes, you know, the guy who's teaching or sharing the message goes, I'm like a man standing by the river selling water. Yeah. And he says, it's even funnier that I'm a man standing in the river selling water. <laughs> and I was at a meeting and I heard it and I never went back because I realized I'm fucking wet as hell. Yes? Why do I want to go to wet classes? <laughs> We're drenched. Can you make the seeing more seeing? That's why I love it, because this message isn't a path to illumination, but it'll illuminate whatever path you're on. If you're in recovery, this will illuminate recovery, because you will see what you're not. And you will see what you're not is the root of the problem. Yeah, You will see it's what you are being in the act of identifying with what it's not, which is the problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if, do you mind, I'm going to read something out of here. Please. Yes, Course in Miracles. This is a trippy book, so just put it that way. And what he's saying here, this is the only way I see to, to share this is to talk about what we're not. See, I believe you can describe what we're not. Like there was a great Zen master, Dojin, who said to study Buddhism is to study self, 
And to study self is to forget the self. If you could see what you're calling you not to be you, you'd lose interest in it. You lose interest in all that's supporting it. You would. If you saw the thoughts as not yours, you would lose interest in the thoughts. Yeah? If you saw the feelings as not yours, you'd have feelings. Feelings would be noted, but the feelings wouldn't turn into freaking stories. Yes? They'd be fresh and they'd do exactly what they do. They'd come and go. Just like thoughts come and go. Yeah? It's the my. If you look at the word my, that is the act of being identified. So if you put money here and health and relationships and everyone would have a meaning based on where they think they are and you could change the meaning of every one of these words without changing a letter of the word, which is put my in front of it, my money, my relations, my health. It's hugely different, isn't it? I could wish everyone here to have tons of money, but I don't want you to have any of my money. Yeah? The money gets totally changed by the my. That's it. You're not seeing it. You're not seeing the activity of bondage. And if you don't see it, you're going to be looking from it. And if you're looking from it, you're going to try to get out of it in a misdirected way, and you're going to be forced to being in it. All your efforts are going to actually go the opposite way. They'll be used to reinforce the reality of what isn't so by trying to make it not so. Yeah? You see it? So in this, this guy, whatever, this was like a download some lady received in the 70s, yeah? That's about as easy as you can say. And here he goes, he's, and this is the only way. He's going to describe what we're not, yeah? So with the hopes that what you are hears it, bypasses the what you're not hearing it, because the what you're not is going to say it's hearing it, yeah? And then it's going to neuter the fucking message. But hopefully, let's see it get through. So he goes here. Yet we have heard a very similar description earlier, but it was not of you. Yeah? You cannot be described what you are. Impossible. Yeah? You're indescribable, but what you're not can be described. So this book has been describing what we're not. He goes, but this, but still this strange idea of being a non-existent thing. Yeah? But still the strange idea which it does accurately describe you think is you. That's the only way it can seem to be you is thinking. The thinking produces the sense of self. The self isn't thinking. The thinking produces the sense of self. The, think, the self isn't thinking. When the thinking is used to produce the sense of self, there's a feeling that it's you thinking. That's it. That's the, it produces the effect, and then that effect takes itself to be a cause. This is the bondage. It's an activity. And if you see it, you won't be looking from it. And when you realize you're not looking from it, you've never looked from it. The solution has always been available at all times, right where you are with no requirement necessary, because you're it. <laughs> yeah. So he goes... Reason would tell you that this world you see through eyes that are not yours, these eyes, yeah? These two camera locations see a world, but these eyes are not yours. Reason would tell you that the world you see through eyes that are not yours must make no sense to you, to what you are, yeah? If you as a kid showed up right now and saw you as an adult worrying about next week, they think you're fucking crazy. They go, why aren't we all in the pool? You know what I mean? Look at that, look at this. What happened? It's insane. It's insane that we led an activity that's happening and ca that can never escape the here and now imply that it, there's a there and then. That's more important than now. Isn't it? Most of us, are reacting to what's not happening. Most of the time, I have this thing of being at my specialty in psychiatry to be not, what's not happening. I'd only have to work one day my whole career because I'd make about 70 appointments. Everyone would come in thinking they're going to have an hour and they'd start bitching about what's not happening. I'd say, that's not happening. See you next week, Bill. Uh -uh. <laughs> Out. I'd be done. Because really, what if you, if you, 
if you agree, it's suddenly happening. Isn't it? Because you're happening if you, as what's happening, entertains not, not what's not happening, it's happening. There's no animal, no bird can think about next week. No dog is ruminating on his little dog pillow about a month from now. <laughs> they don't have it. It's not built in. But we, we, through thought, can think about something that's not happening and make it seem like it's happening. We're really miracle working all day. We're making shit out of nothing. Doesn't it say in AA, hey, we're the manufacturer of our own misery. What the hell is he saying? Where is the misery factory? It's not in the elbow. It's not located in the stomach. It's in the head. As it says, the problem resides in the mind. What is the problem? Not thoughts, but the believing in thoughts. False evidence cannot appear real unless it appears real to what's real. We're what's real. We can make a horror movie out of fucking a beautiful day. So here, even this fucking crazy idea you think is you. And when you think it's you, the you gets presupposed and now you thought it. But it was the thinking that implied there's a you. You can indeed, oh, here we go. To whom would seeing such as this send back its messages? So isn't this, we call it in recovery, self-centeredness, yeah? So we have a view, a self-centered view. So we see how everything pertains to us, yes? So this vision, yeah? To whom would seeing this vision, this way, send back its messages? To that which is making up self. Yes? It says, to whom would seeing such as this send back its messages? Surely not you. The messages aren't going to you. They're going to the head. And then the head's going to make up a you. And then you are going to identify as it. And then you now get contained by the story you're entertaining. You become the inmate, you become the prisoner, the ward, and everything. So, to whom would seeing such as this send back his messages? Surely not you, whose sight is wholly independent of the eyes to look upon the world. What is he talking about? There's awareness. That's the true seeing. And we all, we're all that. And it's independent of the eyes that see the world. We're seeing, but not visually, yeah? We're seeing as mind, as awareness. What can, so he says, if this is not your vision, if self-centeredness is not your vision, what can it show it to you? It's not your vision. This is what I love about alcoholism. You listen to people share at meetings and they almost get to it. They go, I can't believe all of you think just like I do, feel like just like I do, do the same shit that I did. Yes, and what does that imply? They're not your feelings. They're not your thoughts as everyone has them. <laughs> How can you privatize the stock version? <laughs> You're calling it yours when it's ours. When people say, oh, my alcoholism, no one has my alcoholism, it's our alcoholism. Mm. If you see it, you won't be looking from it. And if you're not looking from it, you'll see it. <laughs> you'll see the heist. And then, you know, you'll never get gypped ever again. You won't have a crazy idea you can be out of any moment you're in. You're not, oh, I checked out. You never checked out. Yeah? It's just the head pontificating about powers it doesn't have. You cannot check out. You're here. Yeah? You're always here. You're never not here. That's the beauty of it. Why try so hard to get into the moment if you can't be out of it? <laughs> it's difficult to become a spiritual person as a body. 
but it's not difficult to be a spirit. You're an expert at it, literally. So what can a failed system show you? It's failed. Isn't that what they say in AA? Why are you in so much fear today? And he answers, isn't it because self-reliance has failed you? So reliance on an idea called self has failed us. Isn't it about time we open up to another moda modality? Not through self or for self or as self, but from self. Maybe that pause that we experience in recovery, maybe that's actually us. Maybe that's us finally showing up in life. Maybe that pause, that silent pregnancy before an action or a thought is us. Maybe you finally are starting to show up in your own life. Why claim it as what you're not and say, I had a pause? Why not you're the pause having the fucking story? So he goes, the brain, this is beautiful. The brain cannot interpret what your vision sees. This you would understand. The brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. So the brain is taking all the information in and it's referring itself, all the information back to a body. It thinks of you as a body, it remembers you as a body, it perceives you as bodies. This is what it does. The whole apparatus interprets this event to the body. How's it working for us? Can you imagine the body being thought about this fucking much? How many millions of thoughts have been about the body? Not any body, quote unquote, your body. It's like magnifying light and just fucking incinerating yourself. can't go to sleep, you need sleeping age, you need every fucking thing. Because there's a frustration because be believing you're the thinker and that they're your thoughts, you think they should listen to you. But do they? Do the store thoughts stop when you want them to stop? Or do they just go on? You know, like if you were running, you would stop, wouldn't you? Every once in a while. You reach a few times, but you stop. But does thinking stop? You've gone over something that probably never even happened for 40 fucking years. You've gone over it like a forensic unit. See, what was on and on and on and on? It's slavery. Literally. And we're imposing it on ourselves. You can't get rid of the dog if you take yourself to be the dog. You're not going to entertain the freedom from it if you're identified as it. So he continues, the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part, but what it says you cannot understand, meaning you as spirit, yeah? Yet you have listened to it. And long and hard you tried to understand its messages. You have not realized it is impossible to understand what fails entirely to reach you. This fucking narration doesn't go anywhere. Remember in AA it said, you have to admit your palace, and then there's in this, but in the book it goes in a different way. You admit to your innermost self, that's what worked for me. When something admitted to my innermost self, that's what changed my life, yes? This is like the same saying, you know? All these understandings that this fucking thing sends back to us doesn't even get even close to us. It goes right back to the problem that uses it to produce more problems. Look at what people have done at not these type of meetings, but there's a lot of meetings about enlightenment and awakening and everything like that. It's driving fucking people crazy. It would have been better if they never heard the word enlightenment. They would have had a better day today. And a poor, a poor thing with awakening, because people think they were awake and they did, they did something to fucking blow it, which is unbelievable. It would have been better if they never heard the words. You can take the most beautiful thing, and if the mental state claims it, it can use it for fucking hell. 
Isn't it true? You take an alcohol, you drop it in heaven, it's hell in about half an hour. You take our head, let's say you're feeling a little bad. Your head projects it as a lifelong depression. If you're feeling good, it fucking minimizes it. It gets us, when are they going to figure out I don't deserve this? Yeah? How fast does it take? Ten minutes? But if it's, even if there's a scent, it could be bad, or it's going to be a lifelong depression. Do you want to live under that? To me, that's tyranny. It minimizes any possibility of life and maximizes the fucking story. I saw a guy who said he was depressed all the time. I saw him at a party and he was smiling. I walked up to him right there. I said, are you depressed right now? He said, no. He said, see, it's a fucking story. You aren't depressed every second of the day. It hasn't been bad all the time. It's never not going to get better as baloney. It's all extreme yapping. There is a solution. It says it here in a beautiful way. You have received, it says, denying what you are. This is the act of what's happening right now. Denying what you are and firm in faith that you are something else. That's selfing, yeah? The selfing is denying what you are, let's say, call it spirit, and is firm in faith that you're something else, which is body. Denying what you are and firm in faith that you are something else. This something else that you have made to be yourself becomes your sight. Self-centeredness is how I see. And I'm blind to what's seeing. And when I use self-centeredness to look for what I am, I'm blind to it. It doesn't help. Yet, it must be this something else that sees and as not you. We're listening to a propaganda station. And that sees and as not you explains its sight to you. It tells you they're out to fuck you. It's going to be a terrible day. Do you get a sense of it? It's describing what we're not perfectly. So why? Not to browbeat yourself, but to see maybe I'm not that. Just to have the possibility I may not be that. Not, we're not feeding a possibility of what you are. You are already that. We're feeding you as what you are, a possibility of what you're not. So that it will recognize it. You do not have to become more of what you are. You have to see that you're less of what you're not. If you get the direction correct, it works, yeah? It's sound. It's like the horse is in front of the cart. It makes freaking sense to the point where, in my experience, it became a, the last answer. And that's a damn good answer in time because it's negated any need for any other answer. I've been entertaining it since I've heard about it like 20-something years ago. And it never goes into turbocharged or extreme radical. It's just ordinary dog shit awakeness. <laughs> Incessantly, all day, all night, you're never gypped. You've never not been in any moment you're in. You stop looking for what can't be found and you're pretty damn successful looking for shit that can be found. Like a good sandwich or a pair of pants or a shirt. I'm successful every day, but I'm never looking what I, for what I can't find, never because I am what's looking. There's no need to try to find it. I am it, yeah, and so are thee. I wouldn't share this. I'd much rather share a practice that would make you feel better. I do it, because you could keep coming back. We could have long retreats. <laughs> yeah. You could sign up for a five-year internet course, and we'd have degrees of getting better. And then possibilities that you fucked up and fell down again, but then you could pay more money and get up there again. But no, this is a simple invitation. It's like tag your it. Yeah, I'm like a mailman. I'm delivering the freaking news. I don't want to read the letter with you. Just hit, read it. And I'm, I have faith in the message because my mind has entertained it. Not my mind has entertained it. And it's verifiably or fucking authentic. 
And it's, it's the clearest, it's the warnings I wasn't seeing in all spiritual scriptures. They're all over the place. They, they say the seeker is the sort, or they mention a statement, the open secret. How could something be a secret if it's open? Of course. The gateless gate. What? How could there be a gate without a gate? Exactly. There's no toll booth you have to pay to enter. You are that. See, this is what happens. We miss it because of time. Time makes us look. Yeah? It's a form of looking, not seeing. And the solution is timeless. You are the solution right this second. Yeah? Something that's always here, you don't notice it, ever. Yeah? That fish can live its whole life in the ocean and really, it, it could probably sign up for like wet classes. Yeah? It could probably have an assumption that it's been dry for fucking 20 something years. This is what it happens. It's a simple correction. And you know what? It will illuminate AA. It will illuminate whatever way you're in because you'll be the light that you've been looking for. Yeah? You'll be what you're looking for. The seeker is the sort. There's a great master, Hoang Po. He says, you cannot use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You cannot use mind, big mind to seek mind. You can't use light to seek light. It's a warning. He's not talking to Steve. He's talking to the Buddha, a.k.a. Steve. <laughs> He's going Buddha, a.k.a. Steve. You can't use yourself to find yourself. The Buddha goes, fucking, you're right. How long did it take? No time whatsoever. Now the Buddha will stop looking for the Buddha. Why would he say that to Steve, Mary, and Jill if there were Steve, Marys, and Jill? He said to Steve, Mary, and Jill, Hey, Buddha, you can't use yourself to find yourself. Hey, mind, you can't use yourself to find yourself. Hey, light, you can't use the light to find the light. What a great bit of news. Oh, we gotta go soon, I think. Now I don't wanna go, see? <laughs> but do you get the flavor? I'm, t I'm attempting to the best of this fucking hose's ability. <laughs> Not to talk about wetness, but to have a sense of wetness, yeah? Now, that's it, that's the message. The message is not of time. It happens in time but it's timeless, yeah? And you have that flavor. I know it, I see it. So that flavor is the message, yeah? The solution is not of time. It can express through time, but is not of time, yeah? The solution is inherently before the problem. So from the solution, there is no problem, yes? The freedom is inherently before the bondage. It doesn't have an opposite, yeah? It's not a freedom that comes after the bondage. The real freedom is before the bondage. Because you see there was no one to be bound. Yes? That which was bound, that which one that was held up by the story is a story itself. You see it. Yeah? And that one quality cannot be outthought. That one quality cannot be erased by all the entertaining of what's not happening. It's always here and now. So, yes. Any questions? Um, you have one? Um, we say like self can't save self, or self can't see self. Um, our fish doesn't know if it's wet. Is, is the purpose to say self? No. The purpose is to be of maximum use in recovery. Is, is that why the magic of the fifth step is working with somebody else? Is that like the key? Is that the key for somebody? That's well, you're with working else? with someone else and that other power. And, right. Yes, for sure. If you do the steps with someone else, you have a different effect than when you do them yourself. Yeah? All those things are, are triggers of giving you a free sample of what it's like to be out of self. 
and then the warnings can come in so that you'll be you'll be quite clear that the self is going now is going to be the one to claim that it's out of self yeah that's what the mental state does it claims its own absence and says it was there having it that's just to see it it's just a rep it's not personal it's it replicates itself that's it's a mental process the mental process at any time your attention or attention goes in there is in the act of being identified as a self go to memories that's in the act thoughts act interpreting feelings and everything else act yeah it's always in the act of being identified as self but there's you're seeing it so you're not in the act of being identified as self it's in the act but you're not yeah that's the that's the joy it's in the act but you're not in the act you're seeing it. <clears throat> yeah? Fake news. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, Phil Wilson said that AA was a, what a, a kindergarten of spiritual. Yeah, yeah. Are there, do you, in your opinion, are there some errors in the program, for example, identifying as an alcoholic? I'm an alcoholic. Is that what you're talking about? No, I don't see that as an error at all. Okay. You can wear that loosely. Okay. Yeah. AA has a different, AA is meant to be helpful. This message isn't meant to be helpful. <laughs> no, literally, it isn't. So I, which I love, I can, I live in AA also, so I can be of help there and receive a lot of help there. But this, in this topic, help isn't help, yeah? The, how, the best thing to deliver here is nothing, consistently. So that you realize what you've been calling nothing is everything. And then you are what you've been looking for, literally. Yeah? And that, then life won't be put off to another second. Yeah? It won't be dependent on next week. Every freaking moment is all there is. Yeah? You never been you never parachute in, nor do you parachute out. You're here completely. Yeah? with no thought of effort. That's the beauty of it, yeah. And then, see there's a thing, I remember, you know, when you do service in AA, you get a sense of, I would have a sense of being bigger, you know? I'd come out of myself and I'd have a sense of being available, and then you'd sense the presence of something, yeah? And this happened thousands of times. And then one time it happened, and my, my head shifted into, I'm the presence, yeah? And I'm always available, and therefore I'm of service. That was fucking cool. Yeah? Because I was in the thing of always going back up the ass of self, and then doing the service to like a divine proctologist, pull me out, and then I really enjoyed the spaciousness, but rushed right back in by claiming I'm the one who was doing the service. Yeah? So I'm up the ass again, but this one time it popped out, and I realized I'm the presence. And meaning being present, I'm always available. Which is, that's the type, that's the definition of presence is here. Yeah? And if I'm always available, I'm of service. Yeah? Totally different. It doesn't mean that I don't do service, but now the attitude is of service. Much, much, much broader. Just like surrender turning into surrendered is much, much broader. Yeah? Surrendered is like you have the ability to be convinced. You have been convinced of those two facts. You're powerless over drugs and alcohol and you're not managerial quality. You have come clear as hell as that. There's no more debate about it. When I was in a debate about it, it produced terrible fucking consequences for me and other. Now I'm in agreement with it, it's been pretty mellow, yeah? What, it didn't change the facts, did it? No, no, because you override facts. You're reality. If reality is denying it has alcoholism, and yet it has alcoholism, man, it's going to be a fucking shitstorm, yeah? Because the, 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 the reality can deny anything, because it's real, yes? It doesn't change it, it can deny it. So the last people that know how fucked they are are the people who are fucked, usually. That wasn't an easy marketing. Was it? Tons of advertising all fucking day. 
I remember when my left arm would be bleeding, I would just look right. I'd just fucking avoid everything. Like, unbelievable. Hey, Paul, hey, you're bleeding. I fucking don't worry. It was just insane. Yeah. So, hey, I'm so happy that everyone's here. I think we got to go to an AA meeting now. Right? Yeah, if uh, you didn't get quite get enough, Cafe Tropical is down some direction from here, I think. That sunset. <laughs> sunset. Okay. It, yeah, it's a, only about a mile from here. There's a five o'clock meeting, and Paul's going to be the leader, 15 to 20 minute share on a portion of the big book that is important to him. Uh, if not, uh, I'm staying here, so no. You did know. we uh, pass the basket and did we, we did. tell anyone shirts and everything? No, we didn't tell them shirts. Does anybody want a shirt there? Uh, Let's do it with a little more vim and vigor. <laughs> no, anyone want a shirt? It's market. It's market worth better. They're fantastic shirts, and they're a bargain at three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, we gonna can we pass the basket? And stuff? We did that. Oh, we no, did it already. We have to pass it five more times. Good yeah. to see you, man. Good to see you, bro. Yeah, please give generously. Yeah, please give generously. Hey, Paul. Uh, next time you're in LA, maybe you can speak at one of our meetings in Sherman Oaks. Should you still do that? Yeah, yeah. I got her. Yeah. Everybody get the uh, thing. Yeah. Pass it around. Yeah. Uh, so nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And so you still have your fifth steps in.